Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the series Doctors on Social Media Teach Podcasting. I am your host, Dr. Taylor Brana. I'm a psychiatrist. I've created, at this point, uh, I believe seven or eight podcasts within my own network. I've helped so many people along the way create their own podcasts, and it's just such a lovely medium to spread a message, to learn new things, to meet new people, networking, to create a business, to build business connections, to spread information. There's just so many positive aspects to podcasting. It's just such a joy to do this process. And I also have some amazing physician podcasting guests with me today. So I'm, uh, again, super excited to have uh, my guests on with us. Now, this is a series, this is episode eight of the Doctors on Social Media Teach podcasting series. So if you guys go to doctorsonsocialmedia.com, you're going to be able to listen in to all these amazing tips, tricks, the things that you need to look out for, all of those things that we want to learn when it comes to podcasting. This episode is going to be specific to uh, the do's and don'ts of editing. But I do want to say, again, if we go a little off script, that's totally fine because these guests are going to provide value from their experiences, from their story, from everything they've gone through. So I'm really excited to have my guests on today. So first, I'm going to bring on uh, our first physician, Randy Cook. Let's bring him on. Hello, Randy. How are you doing? Hi, Taylor. Great. How are you? Amazing. Amazing. Now, for those who do not know, Randy Cook, with more than four decades of bedside practice as a general and vascular surgeon. Dr. Cook is a well-respected clinician, educator, and organizational leader. He holds certifications from the American Board of Surgery and the American Board of Pre Preventative Medicine in the Undersea and Hyperbaric Medicine subspecialty, which that sounds amazing, as well as certifications from the American Professional Wound Care Association and the American Board of Wound Management. He is a fellow of the American College of Surgeons and the Southeastern Surgical Congress, and formerly, formerly served as a designated medical examiner for the Federal Aviation Administration. Dr. Cook served as chairman of the Education Committee, a committee for the Wound Healing Society, and was a member of the Physician Exam Committee for the American Board of Wound Management, where he developed examination criteria that established the standard for national certification. As a physician training faculty member for Heal Heologics, Randy trained physicians and mid-level providers in the science of wound care and hyperbaric medicine, treatment modalities, and practice requirements within outpatient treatment centers, hospital inpatient de departments, and post-acute care facilities. His efforts in this area helped mold a generation of medical care providers. So again, we can understand Randy Cook here is a true born educator. Amazing. The many years of clinical, managerial, and leadership experience have provided Dr. Cook with the invaluable insight into the practice of medicine and medical practice management. Today, he's an executive physician coach for MD Coaches and the host of RX or Prescription for Success podcast. Dr. Randy Cook, thank you so much. That is a crazy introduction to start us off. Thank you, Taylor. That almost makes me tired. I had no idea I was so busy. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of life's work in there, huh? Indeed. And um, we're going to bring on our next guest, Dr. Christopher Liu. Uh, Dr. Chris Liu, thank you for being on. Hey, Taylor. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm really happy to add value and contribute to the discussion. Amazing. And Dr. Christopher Liu, for those who don't know, do not know, is a physician who became financially free at the age of 29 and retired early at the age of 38 as a result of making strategic investments after the 2008 financial crisis. A graduate of the MD-PhD program offered jointly through the Baylor College of Medicine and Department of Bioengineering at Rice University. He's the author of How I Quit My Lucrative Career and Achieved Financial Freedom Using Real Estate and is a host of the Financial Freedom for Physician podcast. He's a regular contributor to Kevin MD and has spoken about the importance of financial literacy for passive income MD, the White Coat Investor, Board Vitals, Seek Non-Clinical Careers, Somi Docs, Doximity, MedPage Today, FinCon, and other high-profile financial brands geared towards high-income professionals. He can be followed on Twitter at Dr. Chris Liu, MD, PhD, 
Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, as well as Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. So we have uh, some education, some finance. We have a lot of different flavors going on in this show. But guys, I'm going to throw up our introduction video and we're going to head into the... All right, guys. So let's get started. Um, Randy, I'm going to start with you. And this is going to be very basic uh, just to get started off. But what gets you excited about the process of podcasting? Well, uh, th there is a potentially very long answer there, and I'm going to truncate it as best as I can. Uh, I, it was not really my idea. But at about the time that I was about to retire from clinical practice, I was contacted by Rhonda Crow, who is the uh, CEO of MD Coaches. Uh, she knew that I had a background in radio, it goes back a very long time ago. But in any case, because of that, she contacted me and asked me if I would be willing to host a podcast to help publicize the uh, MD Coaches business. Uh, and uh, I, I'll have to admit, I, I had to give it a little bit of thought, but uh, uh, knowing that I was on the verge of retirement and would probably have some free time on my hands, I thought, why not? And then having gotten into it, Taylor, I have to tell you, it's been uh, one of the most rewarding things uh, that I've ever done. Uh, we, uh, we talk every week with uh, usually a physician. Uh, other times it will be other people who are uh, 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 making a su significant contribution to healthcare delivery, but it's mostly physicians. And we just talk about uh, how they got started and how they came uh, successful. There are some great stories along the way. Uh, and just uh, uh, hearing how uh, everybody had uh, a completely different uh, uh, path to get where they are, you know, we, we all kind of ended up in the same place as practitioners. But the road to, to getting there is, is really varied and the, the stories are fascinating and I have a ball every time we have the conversation. Yeah. And that says a lot to, to hear that this is one of the most valuable, um, you know, processes or, or, or things that you've done, uh, through your story because you've just done so much. So I, again, I just think that says a lot about the, the power of podcasting and the power of story and the power of connecting through a medium such as this. And again, thank you for being on. And for you, Dr. Dr. Christopher Liu, what do you think has been the power of podcasting? Uh, what, what gets you so excited about it? Well, I really enjoy podcasting. It's really it speaks to my nature and my gifts, and my talents, but um, there's a saying, every market has its niche and the more you niche down, uh, the more powerful and effective you're gonna be. So uh, the mission of financial freedom for physicians was to empower early career physicians to achieve financial freedom so that they're not dependent upon their clinical income so that they're practicing on their own terms and they're not um, they're not practicing because they have to. So that's been really the mission and it's grown. Initially, it started with a blog. It started with speaking engagements. My email list grew. Then it started with a YouTube channel, Instagram. And so podcasting was just another channel to reach that niche. So, you know, People respond to different things, such as words, audio, video. So podcasting reaches that market segment. Yeah. And yeah. And I really love podcasting because it's it's so it's like it has elements of live. It can be live, can be recorded as radio, TV, um, and you know it can be interactive. You can be teaching one on one. So it's just it's a lot of fun for me, and it's it also gives me another outlet for my creative talents. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that that's great, guys. And and again, I, I can tell that, you know, no matter what level or no matter where you're at, or no matter what your goals are, you can use podcasting as a medium to achieve some of those things. Um, so let's head into, um, I want to talk about this conceptually. Let's pull back for a second. You know, so a lot of people are afraid about starting their podcast or, you know, um, structuring it appropriately. So in the scope of thinking about editing, 
Um, I, I guess I'll hop over to to Randy you first. Uh, what what are some of the tricks or ways that you've learned to navigate uh, the editing process and or at least uh, structurally thinking about your podcast? Taylor, it's very simple for me, uh, and that is um, I, I have left uh, pretty much all of that task to other people. Um, uh, obviously, I'm the oldest person in the room here, uh, and uh, my familiarity with uh, digital media uh, is perhaps not as advanced uh, as it could be. Uh, and you know, lacking that uh, previous experience and knowledge and and not really having the uh, a particular drive or uh, interest in in learning that that side of it. Uh, I thought it was much wiser for me to entrust other people to do that job. And that's exactly what we've done with RX for success. Uh, we began uh, with uh, an editor that Rhonda Crowe knew. Again, we, we had worked in the same company together, and uh, he, he did uh, an excellent podcast uh, as a side hustle for himself. And he was just very accomplished uh, with the editing process. So he uh, was our editor for uh, the first year and a half, at least, I guess, of uh, when we were uh, underway. Uh, at that point, he uh, made the decision to move into to other areas. Uh, and so we looked at the market uh, to find uh, a professional editor, somebody who did that uh, to make their living. Uh, and we found just such a person up in the Columbus, Ohio area. And uh, we, we've had him uh, in that role uh, for about a year, year and a half, I guess. And that takes such a tremendous burden off of me. Uh, and from, you know, in the opening comments, I was telling you how much I really enjoy the conversation uh, with the uh, guests that I have on the podcast, uh, I really don't have any uh, love or interest in getting into the details of making it sound good. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if you go out and, and hire somebody uh, who wants to do exactly that, they can make you sound fabulous. And that's exactly what Craig Clawson does for me. So that's that's my perspective. Uh, I, it, it is certainly something that a person can do on their own. Uh, but if you, if you don't have the uh, skill or the inclination to do that, uh, there are plenty of people who will do it and do it very well. And, and I really want to hop in and, and say, this is why I love having you on for this conversation, Randy, because Again, anyone who wants to start, you can start, right? It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your yeah. level of technology expertise. It doesn't matter, um, you know, if you feel like you're too young or too old or too this or too that. There is a way. And so for you specifically, you knew you didn't have the tech skills. Mm -hmm. um, and so you went with a very wise, I think, an intelligent route, which is outsource. And yeah. And, and, and they're yep. just not. You're you're so correct. There there are no barriers. Uh, I mentioned to you earlier that I had a background in radio, and in in that ancient era, you know, there was just so much bandwidth for uh, people to participate and um, uh, to 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 be able to uh, be in the world of mass media. Uh, you know, you had to have some particular talent or something that you could sell in order to participate in that space. But now that the communication space is digitalized, there are just absolutely no barriers at all. And you can choose to uh, do it all or do a piece of it and outsource. So mm -hmm. the areas where you don't have the particular skills and that's exactly what we did. That, that, that's a great approach. And I'm going to field this over to Dr. Christopher Liu now. Um, so Chris, tell, tell us about your process, the things you think about in regards to, uh, structure and editing your podcast. Yeah. Um, I like the Randy's answer. Um, so there's a, I go by the mantra, um, either the, which is mightier, the pen or the sword. So, you know, if you have the finances, you have the money, you have the staff, you can 
hire it out and uh, do it. It's it'll be more professional. It'll be faster. You can reach scale a lot faster, um, and then you save your time. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is the pen. So it's you um, or the sword where you're actually you you're in the trenches and you learn and do it yourself. So those are two ways of thinking about it. Um, I sort of did a combination of both. So um, I learned the skills for video editing and podcast editing on my own. And it's really easy. We can talk about the tools, tips and strategies a little bit later, but I learned it on my own because I wanted to feel comfortable with the technology and learn it so that once I got comfortable with it, um, that time was well invested. So then when I go and look for a podcast editor or I want to launch the launch of the podcast, I know what to look for and I know who to hire and who has good work and who's not. So that's my thinking and rationale. Um, you know, quite honestly, I really enjoy technology. So I enjoy editing. I enjoy editing videos and podcasts. So about 60% of my episodes I do on my own. The ones that have like really good guests or um, need a little bit more editing or if it's like a speech or something, I'll outsource it to my editor. So those are kind of the two approaches. Um, and uh, I'm happy to go from there. Yeah, and 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 just just because you brought it up, uh, Chris, I'm going to focus on you for a moment. Okay, you, yeah. the I'm I'm big on tech as well, but I understand um, you know not everyone is. But if you were to bare bones say today, okay, you don't have the finances, you don't have the ability to um, you know launch your, you don't think you have the ability to launch your podcast per se. You're not sure where to start. What would you say are the bare bones digital tools that have gotten you to be able to understand or process a podcast? So I use uh, I use QuickTime for the audio. I use iMovie, and um, I use um, Anchor. So Anchor can uh, that basically broadcasts your podcast out to um, Spotify, Apple, Google, all of the major channels. So those are all free tools. Like iMovie is free if you have a Mac. Um, QuickTime is free. Uh, main thing with the um, with uh, podcasting is the audio quality. So make sure you know you have a good mic. You can like this mic here I got off of Amazon for 60 bucks. Um, if it's a video podcast, make sure you have good lighting. Um, I recently upgraded my uh, Mac to uh, the 2021 version. So the camera is a lot better and you can use virtual backgrounds. Um, but all of these tools are, are free and they're readily available. It just takes some time and skill to learn it. And it, it's really not hard to learn, you know, for the types of um, podcasts and the types of episodes that I have, they're more interview style. So they're not, they don't need to uh, any more com com uh, complexity to them. So, um, and I'm always thinking of new ways of uh, adding value to the show, how to make it a lot better, um, bringing on better guests, et cetera. Just to, just to clarify really quick with you, Chris, um, for guest episodes, are what are you, what are you using for that? For guest episodes? Yeah. Um, to, oh, to actually record? Um, I yeah, use, yeah. well, oh, Zoom. Zoom, so Zoom, Zoom is, is my, what yeah, okay. Zoom's like my go-to thing. Um, you know, people use StreamYard. Mm -hmm. There's so many different, but Zoom, you know, the free version, all these tools are for free. So, yeah, and and I want to point this out for everyone. I, this is no secret. I I do I do I have no secrets when it comes to this stuff. We are right now we're using StreamYard. Okay, so this is yeah. StreamYard is what we're using, and I want to make this a little bit more meta for people listening as well. While while Randy and Chris and I are on this conversation. We're on StreamYard. We're recording on video. So I have video. We now have video footage we can use for anything. And we're recording the audio as well, which we can pull out and use for podcasting. So theoretically speaking, because I have two other guests with me, the three of us together, we could all technically post video footage and the audio into three separate streams of podcasts, right? So this is where mm -hmm. it becomes a little bit more meta, especially if you're with other guests who are podcasters. There's no reason for us not to repurpose this content onto our own shows if we find it valuable, right? So this is where um, collaboration comes in. This is where understanding the technology comes in, so on and so forth. Um, so Randy, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop over to you for a second. You have a lot of experience in terms of you know, radio and, and broadcasting and those types of things and just having really great conversations. So maybe a little bit more off script for you, but what do you, what do you think is the most valuable aspects of producing a great podcast? Do you think it's the, the guests? Do you think it's the equipment? Do you think it's the story? What do you think is the secret sauce? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I can, can rank, rank them in order. Uh, I will tell you that, um, 
I guess probably because of my background in radio, I was uh, hyper focused on how we sound, uh, and it is uh, a strictly uh, 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 no video. It's it's an all sound podcast, and so we do our recording on ZenCaster, uh, which is, uh, in our opinion, uh, one of the more editable uh, sources. Uh, the audio quality is just superb, uh, and it really helps us get a good sound. Uh, I, I think, uh, from the standpoint of editing, the most important part of the entire process is to get good sound in the beginning. So the room that I'm working for, from is, although you would, to, to look at it, you wouldn't think that it was specifically sound treated, but there is a lot of bulky furniture like the uh, sofa that you see in the back and sound absorbent uh, material around to deaden the room. Um, I, I made sure that I invested in a really good microphone. Uh, you, you can get a really cheap one that will do the job. Uh, this is a, 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 an Electro Voice RE20. It costs somewhere around $450, I think, and it is the microphone that's present in most of the F FM stations in the United States today. It's gradually fading away because it's, uh, it's very old technology. They were using this microphone beginning in the early 60s. So for me, getting, uh, getting good audio, uh, getting rid of the background noise, uh, making sure that the guests, uh, at least we ask everybody to get into a relatively dead room. We ask them to uh, wear headphones uh, and uh, do everything they can to make the audio sound as good as it does before we ever turn it over to the editor. But I think that's probably the most uh, important thing that we do in terms of uh, making the program sound good. And that was very important to me, you know, since it is uh, an audio only product. Uh, to me that, that that had to be foremost. And then, uh, as I said before, we put it in the hands of a really skill, skillful editor uh, who uh, has the capacity to uh, bring in the music properly and make sure that we don't have any dead air and, and make it a really smooth, very professional sounding production. So uh, I, I guess the biggest thing that I contribute, or at least that I try to uh, contribute in terms of uh, the editing process is to make sure that that he has uh, good audio to work with in the beginning. You know, we've talked about Zoom, and Zoom is certainly a good product. Uh, it's something that uh, just about any guest that you want to have on will have some uh, familiarity with. Uh, but our capacity to work without our audio is not as uh, precise. Uh, as it is with Zencaster and some of the others. I mean, I, I don't want to be a commercial for Zencaster. There, there are other, uh, there are other uh, uh, services as well that do that. But uh, again, to restate, the best that I can do is make sure that I give my editor the best possible audio at the outset. And uh, uh, I think that makes his job not only easier, but makes us sound better in the end. Yeah, absolutely. And and I'll point out the the thing that's, nice about Zencaster specifically is it will like, let's say we were using Zencaster right now. It would take my audio from my end. It would take your audio from your end. It would take the audio from Chris's end. And then you have those separate audio files that are recorded from mm -hmm. our each, each of our individual spaces, mm -hmm. as opposed to zoom, which usually combines the audio into one digital space. So that's why the quality difference is there specific to Zencaster. And I agree for us people who listen to podcasts or like audiobooks or whatever it is, that quality, having that um, professional quality is definitely nice. So it's it's an important consideration. Chris, for you, what are some um, important considerations to make the uh, quality of the audio or the quality of the experience or the even if it, if even if you have other tools as well? What are what are some of the considerations that you think going off of what Randy said? Um, well, I think audio is the base baseline. That's the number one thing. Uh, because <clears throat> when listeners tune in, it's all audio. So uh, that's one thing. One thing that's really helped me because um, I have hardwood flooring and, and stone tiling, so there's a huge echo. So what I've done is um, you put in uh, bulky furniture, blankets, uh, carpet, 
I bought a carpet. Sometimes in the uh, COVID nineteen era, I've had to uh, do podcasts in in a closet, which uh, absorbs <laughs> a lot of the, which a lot, absorbs a lot of the sound as yeah. well. So, <laughs> so it's kind of um, there's a lot of the interesting ways of doing it. But baseline is the quality of the sound. Um, the other thing that I really is, is the uh, equipment. So Randy mentioned microphone. Um, you know, in the past, where um, the uh, the microphone and the uh, computer was was uh, outdated. So even though you have good quality, it wouldn't record it as as such. So make sure your equipment and um, uh, all of that is uh, is all um, of sufficient quality. So that's one thing. Um, with the, the other ways of adding value to your podcast is uh, really getting guests that are um, very that are doing specific things to your audience or that doing unique and interesting things that uh, pique their interest um, really uh, that are really um, on brand to your, to your message. Um, the other thing that you can in, so sometimes the vibe of the podcast also adds value. So some people like the interaction, some people like the, just the conversation, the spontaneity. So, um, you know, there's two types, there's scripted versus just spontaneous. So I like, I like to just, keep it as a just free flowing conversation and, and just so people can really feel the authenticity of the speakers. Um, and then just the, the way, the more creative you can be with, um, you know, with your sponsors, with your affiliates, um, where you introduce certain segments. Um, so that all creates a really um, fun and engaging show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great, great tips on both ends. And uh, I want to point out something that you said, Chris, um, with the quality of the guest, which I think is really important, right? Because it's it, the audio is important, but the content is just as important. And the quality of the guest you have on, like, I can't tell you how many times I've maybe had a hunch that, you know, this person would be great to have on, have them on, and they don't have a mic, they don't have headphones in, um, they're in a room or they're in a crowded space. Um, one of my big, one of the biggest guests I ever had on my, my, podcast personally, um, I completely messed up and my audio wasn't prepared properly in that case. So I think again, it just, it just having the, the thing I want to point out, not just for us, but for the listeners is having a sense of the holistic picture of, you know, what is the structure of my podcast? What are important aspects of that in terms of the microphone treating the room, the quality of the guests, the tools. And by the way, guys, anyone listening, I'm going to go into a spiel of all of these tips and tricks and tools that I personally use or think about. Um, but I, I want to just highlight the importance of what our guests are saying here, which is all these aspects are going to be really important in terms of uh, producing a high quality um, set of content. Now for the Taylor, sake can of, I, oh, yeah, uh, go ahead. Go do ahead, do you mind if I just add a little something there yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, that just kind of popped into my head? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it really pays off to uh, be inventive. And so I, I a, a little piece of advice that I would uh, offer to everyone is that if you're going to be in the podcasting world, be sure that you keep an open mind. And I was thinking about some of the challenges that I have uh, run into from time to time with uh, audio quality. And I remember one particular guest, uh, she was in her home and she was actually someone who uh, had a significant amount of experience with uh, voice acting. Uh, she was a, uh, uh, a presenter on stage and she was familiar with audio equipment and so forth. But anyway, she was in her home and uh, uh, the first time we tried, uh, she didn't have headphones and so that didn't work. So we retooled and we came back again and uh, she was all set up with the headphones and a better microphone. And the, the, the thing sounded like uh, she was in a great big echo chamber. And she, she was in her living room and had these enormous vaulted ceilings and there was plate glass all around. And we tried this and moved there and go this way. And uh, it was just getting nowhere. And I had my producer uh, on Zencaster with us and, and he asked her just to step outside and let's see how it sounded. And she walked outside and it was just perfect. <laughs> you know, fortunately, she lived uh, in a quiet neighborhood uh, so there wasn't any traffic noise and that sort of thing, but just getting away from, from that, uh, uh, reverberation was, uh, was just so helpful. And then the other thing is, uh, 
you know, I, I mentioned my somewhat expensive microphone, and that's always a big help. But I found quite accidentally that uh, one of the best pieces of equipment that my guests have come up with is like a $30 uh, headset with boom mic uh, that was intended for uh, uh, video gaming. It was perfect. It just sounded great. So it's not a one size fits all and you don't really have to make an enormous investment to get it right. But sometimes you do have to have an open mind and be willing to uh, shift and pivot a little bit. I, I, I love those tips. Um, yeah, a, a, absolutely. And I think that's the thing that we want to point out is the threshold to producing a podcast might be lower than you think in terms of getting started and the, the price and all those things. So for the sake of time, I'm going to go head over to some closing statements. Chris, any gems you want to drop the listeners for today and where can they find you? Oh, um, yeah, I've really enjoyed being on this podcast. It was a great discussion. Um, I, I want to add one final tip is um, absolutely in, is uh, in today's Internet congestion age, you know, where you're if you don't, the, your Wi-Fi is really spotty or you're in an area or sometimes the Internet's down. Um, I found that I've actually resorted to using uh, back to the Ethernet cable. So you plug in your Ethernet cable to your uh, desktop and that way you have a more stable Internet connection. But that's one of the tips, you know, um, if you can always contact me, um, uh, you can go to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast. We're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Google. Uh, just uh, Google it. You'll find us. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I have my own private Facebook group. Um, you can check out my books on Amazon or just contact me at um, Christopher Lou, MD, PhD at gmail.com. So I really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, and, and podcasting, I think, is one of the best mediums. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Christopher Liu. And uh, Dr. Randy Cook, How? Uh, what are some uh, last last uh, minute gems and or how can people find you? I guess uh, the, the, the parting remark that I would have is what I opened with. And that is that if you really want to have well edited uh, audio for your podcast, find yourself a really good editor. And, uh, uh, you know, it'll be worth every penny that you spend. Uh, I can be found, uh, my email address is Randall with two L's, randall.cook at mymdcoaches.com. The podcast website is rxforsuccesspodcast.com. And uh, there is a link to the podcast at the MD Coaches website, which is mymdcoaches.com. Guys, thank you so much for being on. Sincerely, uh, time is one of the most precious things we have, and you guys shared time uh, with me and our listeners today. So I can't thank you enough. I'm going to pop you off the screen again. Thank you so much. And um, for everyone listening now, um, I want to let you know, again, there's a little mini lesson. I'm going to hop over and start to discuss that. But if a lot of this editing um, to, to, to Dr. Randall's, Randall Cook's point, a lot of this stuff is can be daunting. And especially if you're busy professionally, you have a lot of stuff going on you might not have the time. So I just want to put this out there. Doctors on social media, uh, so me docs is producing uh, a, a coaching side to the podcasting. So myself um, and some other individuals, we're going to help if you want to help build out your podcast, discuss all of these topics. We'll, we'll create your podcast from the ground up and uh, we'll, we'll help you with the entire process. So if this sounds daunting, it's too much, but you want to go ahead and produce your podcast, if you've listened to this, you like the tips, but you just don't think you can do it, go and, and reach out to me or Donna Coriel or doctors on socialmedia.com and, and we'll do it for you. We'll do it with you. Okay. So I just want to iterate that and, and let you guys uh, know about that. Um, I'm going to head over to some tips and tricks. Again, some of this might be a little scary for those who aren't tech savvy, but again, I just want to under, I want to flush this out so that you understand, uh, the basic tools here. Okay. First and foremost, editing is very important. I need to just highlight this again and again. It, you just having a base level of audio is not enough. Okay. People, there are many podcasts. What's going to make your, your show special is through the great guests, the audience, the, the niche, the brand that so on and so forth, but the editing needs to be well executed. Okay. People, we, we just, everyone has a certain amount of time and people are picking and choosing the, what they're listening to. Right. So it's important that you, as soon as someone hops into your show or your series or your podcast, they have a great experience from the get-go, and that's why this is extremely important, okay? 
So I want to ask a couple of probing questions. You want to think about what is your vision for your podcast? What is the feel of the show that you're trying to achieve? Before you even enter this conversation about editing, you want to understand what it is that the structure of your show is going to be. So is it going to have a fun experience? Is it going to be energetic? Is it going to have a serious tone? Is it going to have a more dark and ominous, uh, mysterious storytelling vibe, right? All of these things are important for you to think about because again, what, what, where do you want your listeners to head to? Okay. You can get very creative, very quick with the music, with the style. So it's important just to think this stuff through. Um, as has been stated multiple times, you want to have a strong pre-recording medium, meaning you want to have good microphones. You want to treat the room. You want to do all of this stuff to make sure that prior to the actual recording, the medium in which the room you're in is going to have all of those things considered to make sure that the recording is good. So I wrote here, you want to think about the quality of your microphone. Okay. This is very important. You want to think about the background noise in your room. You want to think about the echo. You want to, do, are your um, emergency alarms in your house like carbon monoxide or fire alarms? Do you have batteries in there? Okay. Like these are little things, but it goes a long way. You really want to think about the background noise. Are you in an area with a lot of traffic, right? Are you in an area where that might get picked up? Those are things that are important to consider. Do you have your do not disturb on for your phone? Do not disturb on for your laptop, for your computer? Do you have notifications that come up? These are all very important aspects to this. Thinking about the general environment, just like we talked about, right? Uh, the most important thing for podcast editing, and you want to think about this long term, is if you're going to do this on your own or you're going to start off, you have to have a template. You have to have an introduction. I'll go, in, I'll go through this in a second here. You're going to want to have to ha you're going to have on your show your title or your main introduction at the beginning of the show. This is getting a people giving people an understanding of what your show's about. Then you're going to have a little introduction for your guest or for what the listeners are about to what are they about to hear, right? So you're leading your guests in. Then you have the main core content, right? That's going to be the main chunk of the episode and then you're going to have the outro. That's the outro outro or the, uh, the section at the end, right? So you have to think about this template. Now, let's say you have sponsors. Maybe you're going to have a sponsorship in the beginning, or maybe you're going to have a sponsor in the middle of the episode, or maybe you're going to have a sponsor at the end of the episode. If these are things you want to consider, again, you have to have this template, okay? That's very important. Now, I'm going to get into the potentially more boring section of this conversation. I'm going to talk about software, okay? But this is incredibly important for those who are listening um, these are the ones that I use. This is not an exhaustive list, um, but these are the ones I think about. For our Mac users, I use GarageBand for my editing. I take the audio from the conversation from something like Zoom or StreamYard. I put it into GarageBand, and then I have my template. I put the content in, I cut it, and I use GarageBand as my go-to tool. For people who have PCs, you don't have access to GarageBand, so another great one is called Audacity. It's another great tool for our PC users, and um, it works well. It's free. You download it, and you can cut um, audio using this tool. Okay. Now, for our fanciest users, the people who are willing to use a little bit more money, this is around twenty to thirty bucks per month. You can get something really fancy called Descript. It is. Uh, it uses artificial intelligence and all the new technology come out coming out. It will take your audio, it will break it down into a literal transcript. So it automatically creates a transcript and you can remove words, oohs, ahs, and ums using this tool. And you can delete words literally by highlighting a word in the transcript, deleting it. It will literally re re remove that section. So when you produce your podcast, it will quite literally create the transcript and you can delete the written words and it'll actually delete the audio. So it's a very fancy tool. It's not for everyone, but if you're a little bit more tech savvy or if you want to outsource it to an editor, have them take a look at Descript. Um, and again, with that transcript, you can take that transcript, you can post it online. There's ways of repurposing it. So it's a very uh, interesting and effective tool. So it's one of my favorites right now. Ophonic is a very good tool. This is an audio leveling um, and, and, and treating the software that basically will take your audio and let's say it's, I'm, I'm making up numbers, but let's say it's a five out of 10 in terms of the audio quality. Ophonic will bump it up to that eight or nine. Okay. So if, even if you have not the best audio, 
Ophonic is a tool you can run your audio into the software and it'll bump it up. It'll level it. It'll make sure that all the audio is um, of like, for example, let's say my microphone is quiet and another guest is a little bit too loud. It will level those out. And Ophonic does a lot of that great stuff. So I really like this tool. Um, one of the considerations I want everyone to think about is how deep of a level of editing do I want to go? If you want to have a very professional podcast, you're going to want to remove or consider some of the following. You want to remove long pauses from conversations because again, time is valuable for your listeners and you don't want to have things be too drawn out. So it is very important to consider the long pauses in your audio, any awkward pauses, uh, that, that's something we're going to want to treat. You're going to want to remove oohs, ahs, and ums. You're going to want to consider removing filler words like using like, like, like a lot or oh, and um, well. So those pauses in the conversation are what we call filler words. Um, and any awkward pauses or any sections that maybe your guest feels uncomfortable with, those are things you might want to consider cutting. And again, if you do cut audio, you do want to make sure that the transitions are smooth. It doesn't sound clunky, um, especially if you're not recording it live, but you're doing it uh, another time you're going to post it later, right? The audio leveling and adapting, that just means that if you're very loud and your guest is quiet, we want to make sure that the audio is leveled and that it's at an appropriate level. That's why I discussed this tool, Ophonic. Ophonic is very good at leveling the audio and again, making sure that we're all at the same level when the guests, when you're listening to people, because there's nothing worse than having to turn up your volume knob for one section of a conversation, than having to turn it down uh, for another section. That that's that's not a great experience for your listener. You're gonna want to make sure that your music is also appropriately leveled. So if you use music in your audio, it cannot be so loud that it breaks or tears someone's eardrums. Right? Um, you want to make sure that's appropriately leveled so it's nice and loud and pleasant, but not to the level that it's gonna hurt your listener. You're gonna make sure you have to make sure that's well leveled also. Um, so that let's say you have background music, it's it's there, but it's not the main star. So if the music is too too loud. Sometimes you can drown out the conversation or the background that's happening. So you just want to make sure that's appropriately leveled as well. Um, when you're editing your podcast, it's very important to listen throughout the entire audio to check for cuts in the audio, looking at the different sections, making sure everything is appropriate. Make sure that if you have sponsors, um, that that's all appropriate. You want to make sure that these clips, these cuts are smooth. Okay. There should be no uncomfortable... Um, audio sections throughout the audio. Again, this is if you want to make a professional sounding podcast, so you really want to go to this level of detail, you have to look for the cuts. You have to look for anything that you've cut and make sure that those transition points in the audio are very smooth. And again, if you think this is a lot, it's because it is. Audio editing is probably the toughest part of the whole process. And so if you think this sounds like a lot, that's why I really love Dr. Randy Cook's suggestion of outsourcing, but I want you to understand what you're outsourcing. This is why I'm teaching you this, okay? We're teaching this because you need to know what you're outsourcing. If you don't know about this stuff, you're not gonna know what you're paying for, okay? And this is why it's important to understand that as well, okay? Um, as you're audio editing and you're going through the process, I like to annotate key sections of the conversations so that when I am posting an episode, let's say, okay, guys, this is episode 100. I'm so excited for everyone to listen in on this conversation, but I want you to tune in at minute 15. Guys, if there's one part of this episode you have to listen to, it's at minute 15. Uh, again, I'm just, I'm just giving you an example, but if, if you annotate key sections of your episode or the conversation, you can then let your listeners know, guys, at key, at moment at 15 minutes in, you are going to listen to this and it's going to be so powerful for, for this conversation. Definitely key into the conversation, right? So when you annotate, you're going to have those little gems, those pieces that you think are really powerful. It's going to clue people in because again, a lot of people are busy. So letting them know in advance of what they're going to hear is going to be really helpful for them. And uh, I'm going to finish with this outsourcing. Okay. Um, again, this was highlighted multiple times in our conversations with uh, with uh, Dr. Randy Cook and Dr. Christopher Liu, but it goes without saying, I want you to know the keys for your audio editing, but if this is too much, please, please save your time, 
use a little bit of money, do what you have to outsource this process, make sure that people understand what is going on. And um, at the end of it, you're going to have a great, well-produced podcast, well-produced show. And speaking of outsourcing, if you don't want to deal with all of this stuff, reach out to me, reach out to Donna, go to doctors on social media, reach out to any of our guests for tips, tricks, uh, so on and so forth. Use us as resources. That's why we literally created this. Um, and uh, again, we're very passionate about this medium. So guys, thank you so much. Sincerely, I hope you enjoyed the content, the value of today's uh, episode from the series of Doctors on Social Media Teaching Podcasting. Uh, and we will see you on the next one. Please reach out. And I hope you have an amazing day. Take care. And uh, we'll see you on the